This is one of a series of lectures produced by the Further Mathematics Support Programme for A-Level Mathematics Revision. In this lecture we're looking at the Edexcel Decision Mathematics 2 specification and the topic is the Travelling Salesman. The specification says that you should understand the difference between the practical and classical problems and show how the um, practical problem can be turned into a classical problem by completing a graph showing the least weight arcs between each node. <coughs> you should be able to find upper and lower bounds for the optimal tour using minimum spanning tree methods for the upper bound or nearest neighbor algorithm and then for the lower bound using what's called the residual um, graph when one arc, uh, sorry, one, one node has been removed from the graph. We're looking at those ideas a little bit closely. The what's called the classical problem considered that you should m have a tour around a graph which visited each vertex exactly once. So each node or vertex exactly once. So you couldn't go through one uh, node a, a second time if you'd already been there. Now that's in general not going to be possible unless you have a complete graph, i.e. one where every node is joined directly to every other node. The practical problem which is really what what we, as it says, the name says, it's one which could occur in real life, I suppose. The practical problem is one where you're allowed to go through vertices more than once. So each vertex, basically what we have to say is that each vertex, instead of being exactly once, is at least once. So this is the difference between the two. Practical says at least once where the classical says exactly once. Now you can always turn this practical one into classical one by looking at a new graph of least distances or least weights we should really say rather than distance. An upper bound for the uh, value of the optimal tour is basically any tour that works. So any tour at all must indeed be the largest value that the optimal tour, i.e. the best one, can be. Now there are different methods used for finding uh, an upper bound tour. The first one is to look at first a, a minimum spanning tree. So the minimum spanning tree MST. And we've got methods for finding minimum spanning tree as you well know. These are uh, Prims and Kruskal's algorithm. So once we've found our tree, let's say it looks something like this. Doesn't really have... There we go. So one more there's, there's our minimum spanning tree, which is connecting our nodes together. So six nodes. Then a tour would could work by going out from the points in this sort of fashion. Just indicating that we're using these arcs here. And you can see that each time we go to a node we have to come back and then to get back to our final or well the starting point we've got to come all the way back along tho tho those arcs there so each arc is used twice now this is a tour it's not going to be the best tour by any means but the minimum spanning tree or at least the weight of two times the weight of the minimum spanning tree uh, gives us an upper bound and you may be asked to find the minimum spanning tree by using Chris Gell's algorithm or 
Prince algorithm. If you're not sure about how to do that, then look at one of the uh, revision lectures for Decision Maths 1 where they are discussed. Once we've got a tour in this fashion, they usually were asked to make uh, some improvements to it by using shortcuts. Now that's simply a case of saying, well, instead of going via two points, it might have been quicker to come along, say, here. So instead of these two arcs, we could perhaps use a, a different arc which got shortest distance between these two. Uh, and that can be done by inspection. So we, we tend to use the minimum spanning tree, or twice the minimum spanning tree, and then look for improving that by using shortcuts. Another method for finding an upper bound tour is to use the nearest neighbor algorithm, often abbreviated just, just NN, so the nearest neighbor algorithm. Now, this is one which is similar, in fact, to Prim's algorithm in that it starts at some point and then goes out from there looking at the nearest neighbor to that point, hence its name. But instead of Prim's algorithm, which would then look at both nodes that are on the tree at this point, it, it actually then goes on from here. So we're always going forward from the node that we've just reached. So the nearest neighbor algorithm says start at a point, visit the nearest to that, and then go on in that fashion, always looking for the nearest node to the one that we've just got to that is not yet been visited until all the nodes have been visited and then finally we go back to the start point by the uh, root of least weight so nearest neighbor algorithm the lower bound in other words a number which is smaller than our optimal tour or smaller than or equal to our optimal tour is found by the following method we take our network of nodes and arcs i'm not going to draw the arcs onto here at the moment um, but imagine that we've got the network and it's joined together by lots of different arcs one point is removed from that and, and its associated arcs are also removed. So we ignore that point, then find the minimum spanning tree for this residual set of points. So let's say it looks like this. So here we have what's called the uh, residual minimum spanning tree. And then finally, join back in the arc uh, by by using the least weighted arcs that we can. We join back in our point to this tree. So we've got the residual spanning tree plus the two arcs of least weight. brings that point back in. Now that gives you a number which is less than or equal to the size of the optimal tour. In general that's not going to be a tour itself. It's just a number which says that the tour must be bigger than or equal to this. If it is a tour in other words, it does work as a, a, a tour around the um, the graph, then you must necessarily then have found the optimal tour because if it, it's as it's less than or equal to the optimal tour and you've actually got a tour. So if it is a tour, this must be the optimal tour. 
but in general that's not going to be the case the optimal tool is going to be bigger than or equal to this well we now look at those ideas a little bit more closely while we go through an exam question this one from June 2010 paper so it tells us in the table below we've got the least costs in pounds of traveling between cities A, B, C, D, E and F uh, so it illustrates doesn't it, that the idea that we're not actually necessarily talking about distances we can be talking about here cost and we're trying to find the uh, least cost so it says below the table that Vicky must visit each city at least once and she will start and finish at A and wishes to minimize the total cost we first of all need to use Prim's algorithm starting at A to find a minimum spanning tree using the answer to A calculate an initial upper bound for the length of Vicky's route and then show there are at least two nearest neighbor routes to start from A so we're going to use the nearest neighbor algorithm so we've got to look at that find the routes and their lengths having done that state which of those gives us the best upper bound that's from the answers to B and C and finally for part E find uh, by deleting A itself find a lower band for lower bound for the root length the first part of the question set is using Prim's algorithm first of all to find a minimum spanning tree for the whole graph so, and it says use it starting at A so Prim's algorithm says as follows we indicate that we're starting at A remove that row for A and then look for the smallest number in this column so that's 18 and so our first arc is from A to C um, and that's of size 18 we then must look at both columns so indicate that by including C there but we don't need to come back to, s to C here that would produce a, uh, a loop and as it's a tree that we're looking for we can't have a cycle within that but we're looking at both columns and the smallest in these columns then is equal to the 22 which gives us a route going from A to F delete row F put it into our table look for the smallest value in all three columns now which is the 13 and that takes us from F to E delete row E include that in the columns that we're looking at so we're now looking at four columns to see which is the smallest and we go from E and we can see that there are two values in that column of 20 just check all the columns to make sure that those those are smallest yes they are so we can either go from E to B with size 20 or we can go from E to D as the next point because if we look at B there's nothing in there so from E to D with size 20 and then finally from E to D with weight 20 so there's our minimum spanning tree when you're doing that I, I would advise that you actually draw the tree as it grows it, it, it helps um, it, particularly you've got to you've got to draw it at the end so you might as well do it as you're working through the first part of the question anyway it then says go on and so work out an upper bound well the upper bound for the tour is equal to twice the minimum spanning tree weight so we need to add up all those numbers uh, to see what value we get there 
Well, that comes to be 2 multiplied by 93. So the, the, the tree itself is weight 93. So that the upper bound is double that, 186 pounds. Before I go on to the next part of the question, just to look at the marking for that, there was a method mark and uh, an accuracy mark for the tree. And then once you've done that, a B mark for working out the size of the upper bound correctly. The next part of the question asks us to look for the nearest neighbor uh, roots starting at A and to see whether those give us a better uh, upper bound. Now the nearest neighbor algorithm is very similar to prims and often gets confused so do be careful. We start at A in the same way uh, we're, go we're going to return to A eventually, but I, I do tend to delete that row so it doesn't we don't get there too early. And then we look for the smallest one again, which of course is going to be the 18. So the nearest neighbor root starts at A and goes to C. We can delete row C that we don't so we don't loop back there again, so that stops us going back to a point the point that we've already visited. But then instead of looking at both uh columns A and C, as we do in Prim's algorithm, we're now moving on. So we're, we're not going to use column A now, we're actually just looking at column C because we want to go to the point that comes next from the one that we've just arrived at. So from C we look to go to F. And the weight there is 24. Again, delete F. We don't want to come back there. But now move on from C to point F. And from F, we're looking at a value of 13, which goes to E. get rid of row E and move along to column E. And at this point you'll see there are two values both equal to 20. This is where the two roots come in that were referred to in the question. So from E we can go either to B and that is length 20 or alternatively we could equally well go to D size 20. So let's take the one where we go to B first of all. If we go to B 20 we would then move along to look at how we proceed from there. Well we, we, we're getting um, we have to visit the last point of course which is D then so if we've gone from B sorry if we've gone from E to B we then have to go to D which is size 22 and likewise if we've gone to D first we would then have to come to B both of those are size 22 then finally depending on which point we've ended up at we've got to get back to A so we're if we're at B the distance back to A is 36 and if we've gone from B to D the distance back to 8 is then 28. Now because there are two tours there it's probably worth listing them. The first one is A C F E B D A and the size of that one is 125 so its weight is 125 pounds. The other tour goes A C F E B as before but instead of going um, 
I beg your pardon, goes instead of going from E to B, goes E to D, and then comes to B and finally to A. And the size of that one is slightly bigger because we've used this last root here, arc here is now 36 instead of 28, so it's going to be an extra 8 units or 133. Question says, which is the best of the upper bounds that we found so far? Well, we've got 125, 133, and from the first part of the question, we'd actually got twice the minimum spanning tree, which was 186. So the best upper bound is the 125 at the moment. next part of the question asks us to find a lower bound and we, c we can actually uh, use some of the work that we've done in the first part of the question here to shortcut things a little bit because to work out the lower bound what we have to do is to delete one of the points and we're asked to delete point A so if you look at the minimum spanning tree that we had before you can see that deleting point A leaves us with a minimum spanning tree given by F E D and B and that must be still the same all we've got to do is to get C joined back into that to give us the what's called the residual um, minimum spanning tree so A's been cut off from this how do we join C up well we need to look at what's the shortest route for C that we can get back into here and we can see that it's actually C to F which is 24. So the minimum spanning tree for the residual arcs is 24 and then the rest of it's the same 13, 20 and 20. The two arcs that are coming back in we need to find the smallest weight arcs from A joining us back in to the network and um, Uh, those are the two which are on the original minimum spanning tree joining A to C and A to F. Those give us the 18 and 22. So the lower bound is the sum of those which comes out to be 117. Well, that completes the lecture for um, Travelling Salesman. Other modules and uh, other units, sorry, other topics from D2 can be found in lectures that you can get from www.furthermaths.org.uk.